Today we will talk about reduced fetal movement from RCOG guideline. Maternal perception of fetal movements is one of the first sign of fetal life and is regarded as manifestation of fetal well-being. Movements are first perceived by the mother between 18 to 20 weeks of gestation and rapidly acquire a regular pattern. Fetal movements have been defined as any discrete kick, flutter, swish or roll. A significant reduction or sudden alteration in the fetal movement is potentially important clinical sign. It has been suggested that reduced or absent fetal movements may be a warning sign of impending fetal death. So what are considered normal fetal movements during pregnancy? Most of the women are aware of fetal movements by the 20th weeks of gestation. Clinician should be aware and should advise women that although fetal movements tend to plateau at 32 weeks of gestation, there is no reduction in frequency of fetal movement in the late third trimester. Are there any factors which influence a woman's perception of this activity? Women should be advised of the need to be aware of fetal movements up to and including the onset of labor. And she should report any decrease or cessation of the fetal movements to their maternity units. Now, how can fetal movements be assessed? Fetal movements should be assessed by subjective maternal perception of the fetal movements. Should fetal movements be counted routinely in a formal manner? There is insufficient evidence to recommend the formal fetal movements counting during a specific alarm limits. Women should be advised to be aware of their baby's individual pattern of movements. If they are concerned about a reduction in or cessation of fetal movements after 20th week of gestation, they should contact their maternity unit in that case. Women who are concerned about the reduced fetal movement should not wait until the next day for the assessment of fetal well-being. If the women are unsure whether movements are reduced after 20th week of gestation, they should be advised to lie on the left side and focus on the movements for about 2 hours. If they do not feel 10 or more discrete movements in 2 hours time, they should contact their midwife or maternity unit immediately. Clinicians should be aware that instructing women to monitor fetal movement is potentially associated with increased maternal anxiety. Now coming to the clinical history, what should be included in the clinical history? Upon presenting with a reduced fetal movement, a relevant history should be taken to assess a woman's risk factor for stillbirth and fetal growth restriction. All the clinician should be aware of the potential association of decreased fetal movement with a key risk factor such as fetal growth restriction, small for gestational age, placental insufficiency and congenital malformations. If after discussion with the clinician it is clear that a woman does not have reduced fetal movement, there are no other risk factors for stillbirth and there is the presence of fetal heart rate on auscultation, she can be reassured. However, if the woman still has concern, she should be advised to attend her maternity unit. Women noticing a sudden change in fetal activity or in whom the other risk factors for stillbirth are identified should report to their maternity unit for further investigations. Now what should be covered in the clinical examination? If a woman presents with a reduced fetal movement in the community setting with a no facility to auscultate the fetal heart, she should be referred immediately to her maternity unit for auscultation. When a woman presents with reduced fetal movement in the community or hospital setting, an attempt should be made to auscultate the fetal heart using handheld Doppler device to exclude the fetal death. Clinical assessment of a woman with a reduced fetal movement should include assessment of fetal size with the aim of detecting small for gestational age fetuses. What is the role of CTG? 
after fetal viability has been confirmed and history confirms a decrease in the fetal movement, arrangement should be made for a woman to have CTG to exclude the fetal compromise if pregnancy is over 28 weeks of gestation. Now, what is the role of ultrasound scanning? Ultrasound scan assessment should be undertaken as a part of preliminary investigation of a woman presenting with a reduced fetal movement after 28 weeks of gestation. If the perception of reduced, reduced fetal movement persists despite a normal CDG or if there are any other additional risk factors for fetal growth restriction or stillbirth. And this ultrasound assessment should be done within 24 hours. And the ultrasound scan assessment should include the assessment of abdominal circumference and or estimated fetal weight to detect the small for gestational age, age fetuses and the assessment of amniotic fluid volume. Moreover, the ultrasound should include the assessment of fetal morphology if that has not previously been performed and the woman has no objection to this being carried out. Is there any role of biophysical profile? There may be a role for selective use of biophysical profile in the management or investigation of reduced fetal movement. Now, what is the optimal surveillance method for women who have presented with reduced fetal movement in whom investigations are performed? Women should be reassured that 70% of pregnancies with a single episode of reduced fetal movements are uncomplicated. And there is no data to support the formal fetal movements counting like kick chart after the women have perceived reduced fetal movements in those who have normal investigations. Next is about contacting maternity units. When should the woman contact maternity units? Women who have normal investigations after one presentation with reduced fetal movement should be advised to contact the maternity units if they have another episode of reduced fetal movement. Now, what is the optimal management of women who presents uh, recurrently with the reduced fetal moments? First of all, we have to exclude the predisposing uh, causes. Like when a woman recurrently perceives reduced fetal moments, her case should be reviewed in order to exclude the predisposing causes. Secondly, ultrasound assessment is very important. When a woman recurrently perceives reduced fetal movement, we should perform the ultrasound scan uh, assessment as a part of investigation. Moreover, the caregiver should be aware of the increased risk of poor perinatal outcome in a woman presenting with recurrent reduced fetal moment. Now, what is the optimal management of reduced fetal moments before 24 four weeks of gestation? If a one woman presents with reduced fetal moments prior to 24 weeks of gestation, the presence of a fetal ha uh, heartbeat should be confirmed by auscultation with the Doppler handheld device. And if the woman have near been felt by 24 weeks of gestation, referred to the specialist, a fetal medicine center should be considered to look for the evidence of fetal neuromuscular conditions. Now, what is the optimal management of reduced fetal moments between 24 and 28 weeks of gestation? If the woman presents with reduced fetal moments be, uh, between 24 and 28 weeks of gestation, the presence of fetal uh, heartbeat should be confirmed by auscultation with the Doppler handheld device. Now, let us uh, discuss an important algorithm of reduced fetal moments from RCOJ guideline. <clears throat> if at 28 weeks of gestation, the patient presents with reduced fetal moments, we need to take a detailed history including the risk factor for the stillbirth and fetal growth restriction. If the history doesn't confirm the reduced fetal moments, we need to offer auscultation of the fetal heart rate and do routine antenatal assessment. Also, we will advise the woman to check the fetal moments for two hours. If they do not feel more than 10 fetal moments for two hours, they need to contact the healthcare providers. If the history confirms the reduced fetal moments, then auscultate with a handheld Doppler to exclude the intrauterine fetal death. If the fetal heart sounds are not present on auscultation, then we need to um, immediately do the ultrasound to exclude the intrauterine the fetal demise. And if the fetal demise is there, then we need to manage accordingly. If the normal scan is there, then reassure and give appropriate advice to the patient as given here. And if the fetal heart sounds are present on auscultation, then we need to do the CTG cardiotocograph to exclude the imminent fetal demise 
and if the normal CTG and perception of the reduced fetal movements have uh, resolved, then uh, reassure the patient and if the complaint of reduced fetal movement persists, then do a normally scan, which if come out uh, to be normal, then reassure the patient. But if abnormality is detected, then we need to manage as per protocol. If abnormal CTG is there, then we need to manage the patient as appropriate. So with this, uh, we complete the whole guideline of radius fetal moments. I would like to complete my presentation with this quote. Your mind is a ship. It can sail across the universe as long as you don't allow the negative thoughts to sink in it. The storm only comes to teach you how to skillfully sail your ship. Okay. Thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.